All right, uh, welcome to Doozer Shop. Uh, I've got an excellent video for you. Uh, I went machine hunting again, and I bought a Pratt & Whitney lathe. Uh, I had, as you previously remember, bought the, uh, the Pratt & Whitney uh, jig bore and uh, met a gentleman through eBay with that uh, the tilting uh, table with the, the trunnion cradle table you see in my last video, um, uh, High Cotton is his eBay handle, his name is Chris, and uh, we started talking, talking shop as guys do, that uh, are addicted to machinery <laughs> and love metalworking. And uh, so Chris uh, has a whole bunch of lathes. Chris has probably at least 10 lathes. Um, in a warehouse, um, and I went up there uh, to Tennessee yesterday and I purchased this Pratt and Whitney Pratt and Whitney lathe from him. It's a it's called the 12 C. Uh, it swings 14 and a half over the bed. I think nine over the uh, the cross slide. Uh, and it's only it's a short bed. It's only a 30 inch bed, but uh, it is uh, in in excellent condition. Very low use. Um, so let me take you handheld and, and show you a little bit about my journey. I got in. Uh, I was is, is three hours to Tennessee. Three hours back. Uh, I stayed there about two hours, spent a good day with him and in the truck. Um, came back, uh, it wasn't too bad, it was a little after five o'clock uh, and I unloaded it, um, which was super sketchy, which I did not film because it was super sketchy. But let's just say it involved the forklift and uh, my my New Holland tractor uh, <laughs> for additional counterweight and uh, yeah, we got it off, but uh, let me take you handheld. Uh, let me uh, give a shout out to my friend uh, Big Dixie. Uh, Big Dixie uh, lent me his uh, Dodge uh, to haul the lathe. Um, my pulling truck for the uh, my flatbed trailer, as you, as you guys know, my flatbed trailer was unavailable. Uh, so uh, my my friend Big Dixie uh, uh, loaned me his Dodge, uh, and this has got the Cummins 5.9, and it's got a five-speed. Uh, NV45 transmission and uh, I think he's got it. It's a P-pump. It's only turned up about 50 extra horsepower It's probably about 275 horse, but this thing will climb a mountain in fifth gear. It, it is ridiculous how awesome these uh, these trucks are and uh, You know if you're a working man, I can't believe anybody wouldn't want a flatbed uh, pickup truck are you know bodies the pickups are just kind of I, I don't know. They're so much more useful to have a flatbed. So thanks to Big Dixie for that. Um, yes, I had my tractor out and uh, the counterweight in my forklift was coming up. So uh, I set the bucket on the counterweight and I had the lathe uh, picking up long ways. Of course, I had the headstock towards the, uh, the forks, fork uh, carriage. You guys probably didn't see this. I'm not going to go too deep on it. That's a, a Porter Cable 8-inch belt sander. Um, it's probably a war baby from the 40s, but that belt is 8 inches wide and probably 60 inches long. I don't even know for sure, but uh, so that's cool. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that or, or sell it. If I say I might sell it, <laughs> leave a comment or, or send me an email. Maybe I'll... Uh, if you got a good enough story, I'll sell it to you. But anyways, uh, yep, had the uh, the Clark's only three thousand pounds. Uh, the lathe is in the book. It says twenty six hundred pounds. So, uh, but I was forking it the most god awful way possible. <laughs> so anyhow, that's that. Um, I hope there's enough light in my shop because I got the high bay light on. I got that light on. That lamp on. So here she is, kind of back up and frame. There she is, the Pratt & Whitney 12C, which actually swings 14 and a half. I measured it from the chip pan to the edge of the, uh, the cover for the quick change. It's seven foot two inches, and it's a little bit shorter than the book says, which is great, because I was having reservations on purchasing it 
because uh, the space it would occupy. Um, pardon the chains hanging. So I got my gantry. Uh, yep, got the gantry. And, and I, I didn't use it to get the, um, the lathe off the truck. I used it to get the lathe off the pallet. So this is how I got the, uh, the big 17 uh, Clausing um, Colchester lathe in, in the shop. Is I had a pallet jack on the headstock and I have a little smaller pallet jack on the tailstock. So that seems pretty well, um, seems to work pretty well for moving uh, machinery uh, like a lathe. Um, it came on a skid. It came on that skid over there. Um, so I had to take it off the skid uh, once it was, uh, you know, in my shop. So uh, that's where the uh, the gantry was helpful. But I, I forklifted it not from the slat end, but from the the, the the skinny end. But anyways, so that's uh, th look at all the uh, the levers. You know what I mean? Um, Obviously, carriage, cross slide, top slide. It's neat. It's got an angled, uh, angled situation there for the uh, the top slide. Um, let me kneel down. Um, cross feed, or maybe that's long long feed cross feed. And I don't think they're clutches. I think they're they're detent dogs. And I think the manual said they're detent dogs. Now this, I think this is a lock for the cross slide. I don't know if it's, yeah, eh, it, it, it locks it. Sorry for the shakiness. And then of course the uh, half nuts. So uh, that's lead screw reverse, lead screw reverse. That, I believe, yeah, see that? See that moves when I do that? That's the clutch. So um, the motor can run in neutral, and I think that is clutch engaged, and that's brake, and that's just neutral. So that's cool. Um, I think quick threading, quick change threading from 1 to 60. Yep, one thread per inch to the lower uh, right is 60 threads per inch. So that's quite a selection. Um, and this is the 1500 RPM, 21 to 1500. Um, usually it's a thousand, so this has got the optional. Um, so it's got all these levers. So notice these knobs, if you guys are in the know, are called Ring of Saturn knobs because of the parting line. Um, it looks like the rings around Saturn. So this lathe, she's a fancy lady. She's got ring of Saturn knobs everywhere, you know? So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and usually these lathes just have stop and start. This has a reverse, so that's optional. I don't know what this is. That's kind of neat. I'll have to trace the wiring and see what that is. It's a self-destruct button, maybe. Don't know. Now, this three-phase motor, I think it's either three-horse or five-horse. But the gentleman I got it from, he said the gentleman he got it from had converted it to single-phase with some uh, uh, balance caps. And I think there's a start cap in there, too. So I'll have to see what that's all about. Looks like there's a Pratt & Whitney factory electrical diagram, which is sweet. Sweet. Um, I think it's only inch and a half spindle hole with a five-morse taper, which is... Fine. Um, threading, threading gears under there. I'm not going to open the cover right yet. Um, don't know what's in there. That's the linkage for the clutch um, hand lever. So the clutch and brake is, I guess, in there. Remove cover for clutch adjustment brake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this where the lever goes in, uh, it just goes across to the front. 
But this thing is what's called an AMF, American Machine Foundry Kuno, C-U-N-O. AMF Kuno, um, this is a uh, multiple plate oil filter and it's self-cleaning. Well, your self cleans it. But you just turn this, right, and it rotates the plates, it's plates within plates with a, a narrow gap in between. And any schmung uh, will uh, fall off the plates and collect in the bottom, right? So it's a Kuno, AMF Kuno. Uh, they made bowling alleys and Harley Davidsons and apparently oil filters. So that's kind of neat. It's got a sight glass window. Some of the oil spilled out on the trip. Not too bad. Thomas and Betts, nice aluminum covered electrical box with a stylized cover. I bet you this thing's from uh, the 60s. Uh, I'll have to figure out what that is. Wadsworth electrical connection. Maybe that's something with a phase converter. Balance. Well, looks like some. Let me just cut the wires. I guess this is. I don't know, single phase, three phase? What is this? Maybe three phase. He said it was uh, something done up for. Uh, single phase, so we'll figure it out. Um, it's got some kind of ball bearing taper attachamente. Have to figure out what that's all about. I only got three jaws for the six jaw chuck. Um, don't even know what brand it is. I'll have to zoom in and see if it's a Cushman or a what. I don't know. But um, I may might make some aluminum slot covers to cover the unused uh, you know where you can see the scroll poke in there the jaw slots because you know but maybe I'll end up getting a new chuck this is a, a D16 mount and usually D16 mounts have a bigger two and a sixteenth or two and an eighth spindle hole but this is only uh, five more taper or inch and a half um, love this lathe it's got Lots of these little oiler cups. It's interesting. Got oiler cup, oiler cup, and ball fitting. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but oil's good. And this is like a, uh, a th you th unthread this, and it's got a little retainer chain on it for oil. I'll have to see what the uh, the manual says. It's probably, you know, DTE light or something, but. Uh, to figure out what all this is about. Um, quick lock uh, tailstock clamp, which is pretty awesome. Um, lock and quill. Oh, the uh, the Morse taper th three in there is just stellar condition. They had to harden it. Um, I'll have to see what that says. It's probably about splitting the nuts. Uh, yeah, ball bearing taper attachment. Uh, you can't tell because it's full of oil and grunge, but the bed is in fine condition. Um, interesting enough, these uh, felt way wipers are pressure lubricated from the oil in the apron. So that's neat. Uh, the apron, this has a front cover, so you can take the front of the cover of the apron off and uh, access the, uh, the gears. Threading dial of some sort. Um, 400 thousandths per revolution graduated uh, in uh, diameter, not radius, which is nice. Um, nice handle. Somebody's got a uh, stripper bolt in there. Maybe I'll need to either make a handle. Or, I think I'd rather have a sexy, uh, you know, shape handle, bat handle, but we'll figure it out. But uh, kind of back up here without tripping. Yeah, it's got 18 speeds of awesome, and it's uh, it stands uh, three foot wide off the wall and, and seven foot two inches long. So that's awesome. Um, I need to make some room in the shop. So Chris said that this lathe runs great, except the spindle bearings are a little noisy. But he says it takes uh, leaves leaves a fine finish when he uh, when when he takes a cut, which is cool. But um, I know this is getting a little bit long, and but uh, YouTube channel I think its name is Machining Three Hundred and Sixty, and he's got a Monarch gearhead 
I guess like a CK from the 40s or something. And he pulled the spindle out and every gear in the headstock out. I think he just needed to do spindle bearings. But anyways, the Monarch um, gearhead lathe from Machining 360's channel looks like a bear. He had a heck of a time and he even said so himself. Trying to get all the gears out and the spindle out and it's just tons of uh, gears underneath gears, behind gears. Uh, you know, it was just a, a nightmare. So this one, I should take the headstock cover off and show you guys. The spindle is right in the front and the gear transmission is right in the back. So it's pretty easy to replace the spindle bearings. There's three bearing collars, uh, lock nuts one, two, and three, because there's three bearings. And uh, Chris said that he actually has a set of bearings for this. And uh, I'm going to get it running. I'm, he said he had to source them out of England. I might purchase the bearings from Chris. Uh, he was going to keep this lathe, and I uh, decided uh, he had other lathes that were better fitting his needs and uh, space, and you know how it goes, guys, right? So anyhow. All right, welcome to Doozer Shop. Um, I got the Pratt Whitney lathe uh, put into the, the low bay shop, and I rearranged some machines, and... Uh, I don't know how smart it is, but I got it in there and I can pretty well move everything still with a pallet jack. Let me take a handheld and show you the progress that I, I think I made um, today. All right, here we go. The first thing you see is this bandsaw I moved uh, close to the uh, entrance to the shop. Um, <clears throat> I don't think the torch tanks are going to stay there. But uh, I got the bandsaw in front of the, uh, the Rockford planer and uh, kind of see. Yeah, the bandsaw is in front of the Rockford planer. Um, just coming in I, you know, that's a nine foot ceiling. My door is six foot wide, nine foot tall. My slider. So, um, let me back you up again. So that's the bandsaw. Um, I got the Harding HLVH lathe kind of uh, making an aisle away here in front of my, uh, my workbench. And you can get the drawers open just fine. You know, um, plenty of room. With uh, a little bit of room to spare. So that works. <clears throat> I can still access the chips for the Sagami lathe to clean that out. So, uh, yeah, parts washer. Uh, I got kind of a triangulated corner and I stuffed the parts washer in there. Uh, but anyways, so the HLVH Harding is, uh, it's just forming a little bit of a, I guess about a three foot aisle way. And uh, so that's cool. Uh, the press, the mighty KR Wilson, stayed where it, where it was in front of the, uh, the mighty Giddings and Lewis horizontal boring mill. So that's cool. Um, Got my chucks and stuff on a roll around cart. Um, I still got my engine hanging there. Let me kind of zip around here. Um, so this is the new layout. I got the Pratt and Whitney over there. The parts washer, of course, is is on wheels, so that's cool. And then the HLVH Harding. All right, so that's cool. Um, of course, we got the uh, the 17 inch Colchester stayed where it was, and the, the Hendy stayed where it was. It needs to actually move closer to the Colchester, but that's fine. So, the new member of the family is the Pratt and Whitney 12C 14 and a half inch swing over bed, 8 inch swing over cross slide, 18 speeds. Something like 20 to 
fifteen hundred. Normally it's a thousand. Uh, Eighteen speeds. It's got the optional reverse, which they did not all have, and then the, uh, like I said, the uh, the fifteen hundred top speed. Oh, twenty one is the low. So there you go. Eighteen speeds of glory. <clears throat> So uh, we've got it lifted in here. Looking back, I got lathes as far as the eye can see. So that works. Um, I thought about putting the headstock over at this uh, side uh, where the, uh, the Colchester headstock is. But, I mean, let me kind of show you the chip pans. I've got more than uh, got 40 inches in here, maybe something, something like that. And I've actually gained room between the uh, Covell grinder, cylindrical grinder, and the uh, the Harding was closer than the bed here. So that's cool. And the Sagami kind of juts out from the wall as it always did, and the the green, brown, and sharp number 13 universal cylindrical grinder. So that's cool, and uh, I can still access all the electrical panels. I'm gonna kind of show you guys. Um, so there's the lathe. I know I keep moving around, and that's that's really a great aisle way. I actually got a little more freedom of movement there, so you can kind of see if I move the if I move the uh, parts washer out, I can access the end gears and I can also access, which I never could um, maybe you can't see, this is an electrical box on the end here, oh yeah, this has to open to access the contacts um, <coughs> excuse me. so that's cool <coughs> so I got the Sagami where it was and uh, I got a lot of lathes in here folks this is ridiculous, but uh, <clears throat> presumably I can power this up and, uh, you know, we'll be uh, using a lathe. So, I know this is, I should just set the camera down. This thing, the carriage glides like, like hot butter. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I took this off, whatever. Need to make a little spinner for that. And this is pretty good. So there she is, <clears throat> the Pratt and Whitney, shoved into the shop, made more room. Got my pry bars. And uh, I like it. I think this is gonna work. This is absolutely ridiculous this is the last machine I think alright guys I got work on the Pratt & Whitney lathe and I wanted to stop and show you guys uh, the gears um, let me uh, start it up and show you I've been uh, um, I put a power cord on it and I got the uh, the wire nuts in there um, <clears throat> Somebody had uh, some single phase capacitors in there. I marked the leads, but I disconnected them. They had a start switch, a start caps, and run caps. So somebody was running this off single phase. Uh, nice job they did. But anyways, I disconnected the wires because I have three phase. And I think this is a five horse because I started the motor up on uh, my... Uh, six horse phase converter and it, it would start but it didn't like it uh, so I'm starting off my 12 horse uh, converter the original documents are still on the door I did not take it out uh, this is 1956 uh, stamped on uh, something in there I'd show you but I don't remember where it stamps it's something about 1956 so uh, that's got to be about when this thing was uh, produced interesting this is felt. This is wool felt on the door seal. Kind of a high quality deal. I've never seen that before. 
But uh, dual contactors, like I said, because it's a reversing uh, lathe, uh, I got it plugged in uh, over the wall there, three phase. Let me start it up and uh, I'm going to feather the clutch because the oil sprays everywhere. So uh, I can't just throw it in gear because it just blows oil like crazy. Let me start it up and I'll feather the clutch and uh, I'll show you guys a little bit of the oil spray. There's the brake, right? It's spinning, I just pulled the brake. <clears throat> I'm going to stand on a milk crate. I hope I don't splash the camera. Um, first of all, it's got a uh, clutch and brake setup. The one on the left is the clutch, and the one on the right with the three packs is the brake. You can't even see it because it's running, the one on the left. But anyways, um, it's got lots of uh, gears, and they're in really good condition. There's the spindle. So, um, I'm going to try and do this. going to feather them a little bit. Too much and it'll spray out. You can see the, uh, the oil coming out of that uh, pipe. You see it dripping down? It'll stop it. You know, stop. But that's the deal. The oil drips on the, uh, the clutches and the gears. See it coming down? Um, there's a sight window, there you go, kind of a, oh, there goes the oil. Nobody stopped. So uh, it's pretty neat. Back you out. It's got you can see the uh, the engagement clutch. So that's neat. Um, let me take you around and show you. Uh, the back side. So, got the cord going, just plugged in over there. Um, ooh. I don't know what that one bevel gear is. I think maybe that's the oil pump. There's like a yeah, you can't really see. There is a sight window there that shows you that the oil is pumping, okay? What that is is this. That shows you, you know, that the oil's working. Um, Neat mechanism. You can kind of see everything. So, uh, I might change the spindle bearings. I don't know. The guy said that he bought bearings to change the spindle bearings. Um, it looks fairly straightforward to do. Um, of course, there's your uh, KM nut bearing nut. I think there's one on the back side. Um, three sets of bearings shouldn't be too hard. But if you notice, the spindle, even though it's got this cast iron cover, it's not encumbered by gears like a Monarch's totally uh, cluster fudged with gears around it. This spindle should be easy to pull if I decide to put bearings in it. And I may not. I don't know. 
But uh, this thing is really in good condition. Thank you to Chris for selling it to me. Um, but yeah, the oil pump works really well. I don't even know where the oil pump is. But uh, I thought I'd give you guys a quick uh, quick see on, uh, you know, the headstock gears. Because I thought it was impressive. And uh, you can see the, the ball bearings there. The reason I believe it's got such a big, this is a, a D1-6 um, cam lock for the chucks. But the spindle's only an inch and a half through bore, right? It's only an inch and a half spindle. And I think the reason they did that is to use ball bearings and get that 1500 RPM. Um, Timken tapered roller bearings would be the, uh, I guess, the next bigger choice. Um, I don't know why they have such a small spindle. I would like to see like two and a quarter spindle, but that's fine. Now, the Colchester, that does not have Timken tapered roller bearings. That's got gamut, preloaded, I think ball bearings. No, what's gamut? Gamut, gamut's roller, but it's not tapered roller. That's right. I think I'm correct when I'm saying that. I'm not sure. Maybe you guys can uh, shed some light. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm just looking. What's that for? I guess that's for taking that shaft out. I guess that's what that's for. Um, there's the oil filter. That's the Kuno, AMF Kuno. That's where you put in oil, I believe, right? I think that's a plug for oil. There's the sight glass. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I've only got three of the jaws, but I might make some aluminum covers, um, you know, for the the other ones. It's a set true. It's a buck set true. If any, it's a ten inch buck set true. If anybody's got jaws, contact me at Doozer's Shop here. Um, Tailstock is really cool. It's got the uh, the Locky Lou. Um, it's in perfect condition. Um, one thing I kind of wanted to show, I don't know if I can. Um, see that key that keeps the tailstock barrel from rotating, right? It's got the, uh, right there, it's keyed in the bottom of the, the barrel. And it's got that. It's black, I know, it's hard to see. The long key. Well, what happens is when you uh, do the lever, right? That moves. You can't, you see the key, that key goes in and out? It's on a taper, right? That key. is on a taper and it wedges the tailstock. So that's kind of neat. Um, Morris Taper 3 must be a hardened bore because it's in perfect condition. What does that say? Number 3 American Standard Taper, which is Morris Taper. So that's cool. Um, it's got zero backlash adjustable screws, so it's kind of neat. Um, one neat thing, when you oil in here, I, I gotta make that round again, that's easy to fix. In here, it actually goes down through the uh, the top slide, through the swivel, and lubricates the slideways, which is kind of neat. And it's got this uh, like 20 or 30 degree offset uh, hand wheel, which is kind of nice. Um, bed lock. Um, so this is your forward reverse threading. Forward reverse threading and feeds. And oh, this is your your clutch, clutch and brake. So that's cool, that's how that works. Um, 
half nuts, and uh, ah, ah, bed feed, cross feed, another one of these sight level things. Um, this is kind of cool. I don't know if I can get a shot of that. This is a binder, right? That's a, uh, a lever binder, right? That, that locks, right? The, uh, it locks the uh, cross feed when you put that up. So that's kind of a neat feature. And of course, uh, you pull that, that free wheels. Kind of neat. Um, but this carriage, if I can do it, it moves like butter. I mean, it just, it's smooth as can be. Um, here's your pop stop that shuts off the power feed. And this was all gunked up. It's like a fine adjustment for your, uh, your setting if you're going to thread to a shoulder or something. So that works. But um, I tried all the, uh, the speeds and uh, up to 1500 RPM and it works. Everything works well. And uh, even though they're straight gears, they're not as loud as my uh, Colchester 17, so that's, that's really nice. And I've been checking inside, you know, that's why I got the cover off. And I got oil on the floor and yada yada. But uh, the oil pump works. Um, jam up, it works great. It works like uh, awesome. So uh, I don't know if the oil pump works when you crank this. Because I oiled the the heck out of these ways and uh, it seems to be uh, I don't know if that's the oil I put on the Vectra or, or not um, the tailstock has wiper ways as well oh I wanted to show you look at this when you take the binder off the tailstock right little wheels come down and uh, I mean you can push this with very minimal effort okay it's really cool. Um, yeah, there's like little wheels that come down and it's super easy. Uh, I think it lifts up, I want to say like five thousandths or something. And you think, well, you're going to get dirt under it and everything. Well, I don't know. It does have way wipers. So we'll see. Whatever. But yeah, if anybody out in YouTube land has some, uh, some jaws, a set of six jaws for a 10 inch buck, I'll buy them off you um, because, geez, uh, I would really like to have some. If not, I'm going to make aluminum covers for the slots. But I just got done, like I say, with the electrical power. And uh, it runs really, really awesome. I'm going to run it again because I love it. Right? Jam up, man. Like I said, I'm just feathering the clutch because it'll just shoot oil to the moon. Yeah. Awesome. If I get too zealous, it'll... I got, I got the cover back on, like I said, for that. But uh, we're happy. Everything's really uh, spinning nice. So... Alright. Like I said, I think it's a 5 horse motor because it didn't... It was either three, five, or seven, and I think maybe because of the, uh, I got oil everywhere. Um, three, five, and seven, and because it's got the 1500 RPM option, as opposed to 1000 RPM, maybe it's got the bigger motor. I gotta get a mirror to stick in there and look at the tag. So, either way. All right, that's it, do's or shop.